All right, guys, so today we're going to review how to graph rational functions. So you guys learned about rational functions in Algebra 2. Uh, if you guys remember, that's when you have your x's in the denominator of a fraction. So your parent function here is the graph of y, uh, f of x equals 1 over x. And if you guys remember, if we were to plug in some points here, if I were to plug in, for example, 1 for x, I would get a value of 1. So 1, 1 would be a point. If I were to plug in negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 would be a point. If you guys remember what this parent function looked like, it was the one that looked a little bit like this. Now the reason for that, you guys learned that there were, uh, if I were to plug in 0 for x, for example, here, if I did 1 divided by 0, you guys remember that's something you can't do. So I can't divide by 0, and that made what was called an asymptote. So we had asymptotes on these graphs at different points. So there was a vertical asymptote on this graph, and there was a horizontal asymptote on this graph. Now one thing I want to look at on this graph uh, is just kind of describing what's happening here. And we've done this before, but just going in a little bit more detail about it. So the first thing I want to look at is as my x's approach infinity, let's look at what my y's are, or, um, what my y's are approaching. So as my x's move towards infinity, then my uh, y's keep getting closer and closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. They don't actually touch that horizontal asymptote. So as my x's approach infinity, my y's are approaching zero. And if we look at as my x's approach negative infinity, my y's are getting closer and closer and closer to that same asymptote. My y's are also approaching zero. Now there's one other thing we want to look at that we haven't actually looked at yet, and that's what happens as my x's approach. This has zero with a little plus sign. And what that little plus sign means, that means zero from the right side, or zero from the positive side. So as my x's approach zero, so here's my graph. As it approaches zero, this is the right side. Okay. As I get closer and closer to zero, because I'm not actually going to touch it because it's an asymptote, my y's keep getting bigger, and my y's are approaching infinity. Then if I look, as my x's get closer and closer and closer here to zero from the left side, those y's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which means my y's are approaching a negative infinity. Alright, so when we talk about graphing these functions, there's a couple different things we need to find in order to graph them. The first thing that we need to make sure we find are our asymptotes, and that's going to be the most important thing that we do here. Okay, and there are two different kinds of asymptotes. The first one is a vertical asymptote, which is what we graphed uh, at, on this original equation up here at the top. So my vertical asymptote, that's the result of the denominator, which is the bottom of my fraction, equaling zero. So any place at the bottom equals zero, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote, because that literally cannot happen. As a result, the vertical asymptote is something that you cannot cross. So you cannot cross a vertical asymptote. The other kind of asymptote you're going to see is a horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptotes are really just to kind of help us see what our graph is going to do at our ends, what our graph is going to go towards. So you actually can cross a horizontal asymptote. Um, but where horizontal asymptotes come from, you look at the degree of the top of your, of your function and the degree of the bottom of your function. And I used n and d here and that's just because n for numerator, d for denominator. So what we need to look at is our degree. If our degree is top heavy, which means it's a higher degree on the top, then there's going to be no horizontal asymptote. And then tomorrow we're going to do something, we're going to look for what's called slant asymptotes. We don't need to worry about that right now. So if our degree is higher on the top, there is no horizontal asymptote. If our degrees are equal, so if I have like x squared minus x plus 1, over 3x squared, those degrees are the same because they both are degree 2. So the way I would find my horizontal asymptote here is it would be coefficient, leading coefficient, divided by leading coefficient. So my leading coefficient is 1 and 3, which means my horizontal asymptote here would be y equals 1 third. And the last case that's possible is if my equation is bottom heavy. Um, so that would be something like if I have y equals x to the fourth over x cubed minus 3x squared. 
So my degree on the top, whoops, I just did this backwards, I'm sorry guys, let's make that x to the fifth at the bottom here. Okay, so my degree on the bottom is higher, that means that my asymptote, my horizontal asymptote would be y equals zero. Okay, so now we're just going to practice finding horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so for example, this first one we have here, in order to find the horizontal asymptote, I need to look at my degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. So remember, if this is not factored, the degree is just the biggest exponent. So the degree of that one is 4. The degree of the bottom one is also 4. So since my degrees are equal, my horizontal asymptote is leading coefficient over leading coefficient, which would be y equals 4. Alright, now let's look at this example. Degree of the top is 3, degree of the bottom is 4. So that means that this one's bottom heavy, so my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Alright, so now when we graph, the first thing we figure out is our asymptotes. The next most important thing we need to figure out are, are the intercepts. So we've talked a lot about intercepts already, so hopefully these won't be too bad. Anytime I find a y-intercept, no matter what kind of graph I'm working with, the easiest way to find a y-intercept is to plug in 0 for x. Okay, so any equation you want a y-intercept, you always plug in 0 for x. To find an x-intercept, I set the numerator, which is the top of the fraction, equal to 0. Okay, the reason for that is, if you think about it, an x-intercept is when I end up getting 0. So if I have some equation, if I have 0 divided by 13, or 0 divided by 7, it doesn't matter what's in the bottom of my fraction. If I get 0 somehow, some way at the top, that whole thing is going to equal 0. Okay, so those are how I find my x and my y intercepts. So now what we're going to look at is how to actually combine all that together and make a graph of a rational function. So we're going to start with asymptotes because that's the most important thing that gives us a really good guide of what our graph is going to look like. So the first thing I'm going to look at is my vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is when the bottom is equal to 0. So when x minus 1 is equal to 0, that's when x is equal to 1. So the first thing I'm going to have on this graph is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Now the next thing I'm going to look at is my horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote, we talked about that, that's the degree, it's based on the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. Those degrees are equal, they're both to the first power, so that means that my horizontal asymptote is coefficient over coefficient, which is going to be y equals 2. Okay, so now we're going to find our intercepts. So let's start with the x-intercept. Okay, so my x-intercepts, we said that is when the top of my fraction is equal to 0. So I need to know when 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. And that would be when x is equal to a negative 1 half. So at the point negative 1 half, I'm going to cross the x-axis. And then the last thing I need to find is going to be my y-intercept. And then my y-intercept, we plug in 0 everywhere there's an x to my original equation. So that would be 0 plus 1 is 1, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So this y-intercept is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to plot 0, negative 1. Okay, so now we have kind of a guideline for what is gra our graph is going to look like. The last thing you need to do is you need to actually draw the graph itself. So what's going to help us out here is I'm going to use a sign chart like what we did yesterday with our inequalities because that kind of helps us to see what our graph is going to look like. Because if you remember from yesterday, the only way our graph can switch between positive and negative is crossing through zero. Now it's going to be the same thing here. The only difference is you also can switch from positive to negative after a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to do a sign chart, but I'm not just going to include my 0, which I already found was a negative 1 half. I'm also going to include my vertical asymptote, which was 1. And I'm going to see what this graph is going to look like. So I'm going to start by picking any point to the left of negative 1 half. Okay, so let's say, let's go back to my original equation. Let's say I pick, again, any number to the left of negative 1 half, like negative 4. 
If I plug in negative 4 here, that would give me a negative number on the top of my fraction and a negative number on the bottom of my fraction. Well, I know that a negative divided by a negative is always going to be a positive. So that means my graph is going to be positive everywhere to the left of negative 1 half. Now let's do something in that middle section, like 0. If I plug in 0 to that equation, well, I already know that's going to be a negative number because I actually already plugged in 0. Now I can pick any number to the right of 1. So that's any number to the right of my vertical asymptote. Like let's say I plug in 7. That would give me a positive number divided by a positive number, which is always going to be a positive number. So I can use this sign chart to help me figure out what this graph is going to look like. I know my graph is going to be positive after negative 1 half, and it's going to go towards my asymptote. And then after negative 1 half, before the vertical asymptote, my graph is going to be less than 0. So there's that part of my graph. Then I also know that my graph has to be positive everywhere to the right of 1. So everywhere to the right of this vertical asymptote, my graph has to be positive. So that's what my lines are going to look like. You can also use your intercepts as a kind of a guide as well, because if those intercepts are in your graph, you obviously have to go through them. All right, now we're going to go through one more. And again, what's going to be important here before everything else is we have to know how to find our asymptotes. And that's going to be the most important thing out of this entire unit is how to find asymptotes. So in order to find asymptotes, the easiest thing it's going to be do, to do is to actually factor this. So I could rewrite this equation as x minus 3 and x plus 2 at the bottom. So let's start by finding my vertical asymptotes. So my vertical asymptotes is when the bottom equals 0. So that's going to be at x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So this graph is actually going to have two vertical asymptotes. So at positive 3 and negative 2. Alright, now I'm going to find my horizontal asymptotes. So the horizontal asymptotes, remember, those are dependent on the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. This is bottom heavy, so my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So there is my horizontal asymptote. Now I have my asymptotes, I'm going to find my intercepts. So let's start with my x-intercept. x-intercept is when the top is equal to 0. So can 1 ever equal 0? Okay, no, that's never going to happen. So because of that, there's actually no x-intercepts. And the reason for that, if you think about it, in this case, there's an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote there. Now, we are going to do some equations later where you actually do cross that horizontal asymptote, but in this case, we don't need to worry about it. We're not even going to touch it. So the last thing I need to find, then, is my y-intercept. And remember, any equation, anytime you're finding a y-intercept, you just plug in 0 for x. So this is going to be 1 divided by 0 minus 0 minus 6. So my y-intercept is going to be at negative 1, 6. Alright, so now that I have this, I'm going to figure out what my graph actually looks like. And again, I'm going to use a sign chart because I think it's a little bit easier to figure out my graph this way. So I have no x-intercepts, so I only need to mark my vertical asymptotes. So now I'm going to pick a number to the left of negative 2. I'm going to use the factored form because I think it's a little easier to figure out my signs. So if I plug in like a negative 10 here, that would be a positive number divided by a negative number times a negative number. And that whole equation is going to work out then to be positive. Now I'm going to pick a number between my asymptotes, okay, like 0. So if I plug in 0, I've already worked that out, I know that's going to be a negative number. So that means everything between my asymptotes is going to be negative. Now I'm going to pick a number to the right of 3, like 27. If I plug in 27, I'm going to get a positive number divided by a positive number divided by a positive number. So everything to the right of 3 is going to be positive. So that means this graph is going to be positive everywhere to the left of that asymptote. It's going to be positive everywhere to the right of that asymptote. And it's going to be negative everywhere in between going through our intercept. And that's all we're going to look at today for rational functions. We're going to do a little bit more of them tomorrow. They're going to get a little bit more complicated. But for today, just make sure you guys know how to find, find your asymptotes and how to find your intercepts. And that's it.